It's a forgotten art that has long been replaced by emails, texts and social media rants. But author and self-confessed romantic Simon Garfield is keen to bring the forgotten tradition of old-fashioned handwritten love letters back. So with over half of Britons never having received a love letter and clueless on how to write one, Garfield has shared a modern guide for would-be Romeos. The non-fiction writer's top tips on becoming a smooth wordsmith include neat handwriting, a personal touch such as a photograph, and even borrowing words from a famous poet. However he has warned against using scented paper, coming across as needy, and doing a rush job. Speaking about the practice of writing love letters, Simon said, the UK is a nation of frustrated romantics. Having written, studied and collected letters for years, for me there is no finer and more effective way to express your love for another than via a love letter. My favorite love letter of all time was written by Winston Churchill in his famous note to this wife Clemmy. Its beauty lies, not so much its use of lofty, complex language, but because it is truly authentic. Both to him and to the relationship that they enjoyed together. Let's hope my modern guide can bring this gift to all. Give yourself a little time, this is not a tweet. Jane Austen once said that the best kind of letter is a talking one, right as if you were chatting intimately to your friend over tea. Catherine Mansfield said, this is not a letter, but my arms around you for a moment. A letter gives you a chance to say things you're too tongue-tied to say in person. So 70s and not all postal staff will share your taste in citrus top notes. Unless, of course, your scent will instantly send the recipient into your arms. Charles Schultz wrote special messages to his paramour in his peanut strips. Never plead and remember your sense of humor. If you're sending a card rather than a letter, find an illustration or photograph that will mean something. You won't be the first. I am dying so for the love of you. Yo, you have made me dazed and thunderstruck. That was Marcus Aurelius, writing in about 140 AD. In Victorian times, an upside down stamp on the upper left of an envelope meant I love you to some, but I don't love you to others. Confusion reigned. Breakups followed. Yo, you don't want the object of your affections to be distracted by it. Borrow some words from the similarly smitten. Beethoven, perhaps, writing to his immortal beloved, never another one can own my heart, never never. Probably best to ignore the advice of a Chinese writing guide from 1938, which suggested that love letters should be accompanied by a basket of fish. Don't make it too lascivious or sexual, this isn't a one-night stand. 
The tips come as new research carried out by Royal Mail reveals 53% of Britons have never sent or received a love letter, with most blaming embarrassment over their handwriting or not knowing structural letter. But despite the disappointing statistics, 36% of people admitted they would love to write a love letter, and it was voted the best way to express your feelings, with many admitting it was the most likely way they would make their burgeoning relationship official. Mark Street head of campaigns at Royal Mail commented, whilst social media is a fantastic way of keeping in touch on a day-to-day -day basis, clearly there is a call to go back to the act of sending and getting to keep a physical letter, which someone has lovingly taken the time to write.